Greetings from the heart of Rice University. In a typical year, I would begin by saying good afternoon to all our new parents and families, but it's not a typical year. And so you may be watching this greeting not only at any time of day or night, but rather than here with me on campus, you may be in your own homes, whether in Houston or across the globe. But wherever you and your new Rice Owl are as you watch, this week you are all becoming part of the Rice community. It is thus a special pleasure in these most difficult times to welcome all new families into the Rice family. Greetings to all joining us today who played a role in raising our newest group of students, parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, and friends of the Rice class of 2024, and a special welcome to the families of our new transfer students. You come from a great variety of experiences, from small towns and large cities, from as close as a few blocks away to as far as Harare, Zimbabwe, and Hanoi, Vietnam, from huge megalopolises like Shanghai, China, population 24 million, and Seoul, Korea, to small towns like Dyer, Arkansas, population 911, well, now 910. Some of you are part of large, closely knit extended families, and some single mothers or fathers raising children on your own. Some of you enjoy lives of great privilege, and some of you aren't sure you'll make it to the next paycheck. Some of you are Democrats, some Republicans, and some, maybe most, won't confess to being either. Some of you will be leaving your only child with us today, and others have a half dozen more at home. Some of you are sending off the third generation of Rice students in your family, and some of you are dropping off the first person in your family to get a college education. Some of you couldn't be happier, some of you are on the verge of tears, and most of you are probably both. But I will bet we will all agree on one thing. Your children who are beginning at Rice are remarkable people, and they owe a great deal of that to you. So wherever you are in the world, from Anchorage, Alaska, to Santiago, Chile, and every place in between, thank you. Each year, I commiserate with the new parents and other family members saying goodbye to their children as they bar embark upon their college experience. This year, with the limited engagement you could have on our campus, and especially if you could not even come to the campus, sending or leaving your child may have been even more challenging. Some of you, including many families abroad, simply sent off your child on his or her own. Some of you remain at home where your new Rice Owl also remains to take courses remotely. And a special greeting to our families in China whose children may be studying at Sustec in Shenzhen. But perhaps what is different this year is that for all of you, as much joy that comes from seeing your child begin college, this year almost all of us will have some disappointment as well. The vast majority of our new students this year will be living on campus, but some have chosen to remain at home, and still others, especially our international students, could not make it to our campus this fall. And for those on our campus, many aspects of the experience will be very different. This makes it very difficult to craft remarks that are appropriate for all of you. But whether you're at home with your child who will study remotely or sitting in a hotel or home near our campus, what I do know is both we and your child will need your help. Your child, rather your young adult's new life may be complicated for them to navigate. They will want your support even while you remember that part of their experience here is now for them to learn to make their own way through the world. And here at Rice, whether our student is on campus, off campus, in Houston or remote, they will have access to a wide range of support and social engagements. Rice is indeed a very special and distinct university focused on our strong sense of community. I actually could make this speech and all the speeches perhaps to parents of entering freshmen across the nation very short. In the end, it all boils down to four words. Don't worry, don't cry. I can barely remember that time now over four decades ago when I was dropped off at college by my parents. For some of your children, this will be their first extended time away from home. I had already spent half a year away from home in the 11th grade in Germany, but still that sense of being deposited at my college was new. For one thing, in Germany, I was living with another family. At college, I wasn't sure who, if anyone, would take an interest in my well-being. I was, it seemed, 
on my own. That is undoubtedly an important part of the college experience, that chance to grow in self-reliance and independence. But here at Rice, as those of you who dropped off your child probably already observed, we immediately welcome our students into a new family. They are assigned upper-class advisors, some of whom were welcoming and calling your child by name even as you drove up. Several hundred Rice students have given up more than a week of their summers to take on the task of orienting the new students, your family members. Think about that. In a small university like Rice, that level of involvement and commitment is just amazing. And the competition for this privilege is intense. Typically only about half of the students who apply are selected. At Rice, our new students are not a faceless part of a large undergraduate student body. Instead, they are assigned from the beginning to one of our residential colleges. In fact, they are only one of about 100 or fewer new students assigned to their new home. And before they even get there, many of their fellow students already know their names and something about them. And they are not welcomed as junior members in some sort of fraternity or sorority ritual. Rather, they are welcomed as a slightly younger sister or brother. And this is true whether they are matriculating here in person or online. Our obligation to support them in realizing their aspirations is no different. And those of you at home may think somehow that your challenge is less, but in some ways it is more, as you need to help your child balance between being a highly engaged participant in their university and still being a member of your household. We ask you to recognize with them that even if they haven't changed their location, they have embarked on a new chapter in their lives. Your children are here because they are already young women and men of remarkable accomplishment. Having been selected from over 23,000 applicants for under 1,000 places. When we asked them on housing forums what their favorite memory was, many said receiving their acceptance at Rice. Why have they chosen to come to Rice? Presumably because they saw here opportunity, opportunity to learn, to grow, to take the next step in becoming contributors to our world. And they will do so in perhaps the best environment in the country, as Rice has in recent years been ranked in the top few schools for the quality of undergraduate student life and for student happiness. They will take advantage of our diversity for we have been repeatedly recognized for the interaction among students of different racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic backgrounds. You are lending us your young family member. This relationship is not, however, just for your benefit or ours, but for the young person you are entrusting to us. We benefit from the presence of your child and are excited to have him or her as part of our community. Most of you will, in fact, spend a great deal of money to send your child here. Even though Rice has been singled out as one of the best values in private higher education today, we understand the sacrifice and commitment you are making to send your child here, especially in these challenging times. And we are very grateful for that. But I want you to know that we too are investing in your child. Indeed, the actual cost of educating each undergraduate student each year is much more than full tuition. That means that even apart from scholarships, Rice is making an investment in your child, in every student at Rice. Thus, both you and we have an investment in your child's future. This is not an investment solely for your benefit, our benefit, or even, in fact, your child's benefit. We're a nonprofit institution, and we make these large investments in these incredibly talented young people because we believe it will serve our society and our world. Your children's futures will be great and rewarding, but they will be so because they too are making contributions. We will return your child change, perhaps even changed in ways you don't like. That is not your responsibility or even our responsibility, but is the process of becoming educated adult members of our society who will make their own choices who will grow in response to their education and the opportunities they confront and they master. In the years ahead, you will experience both joy and sadness as your children confront challenges 
and make their own way through college and life. That may be especially true in these times. And your children, even though they are now young adults, may surprise you with new fears and insecurities, and they will need your help, patience, and understanding to overcome them. This process of change is not always easy or comfortable, and your child may make choices with which you disagree. So lastly, I want to read you something from a book that, so far as I know, can be found in only two libraries in the world. The title of this book is Herman Kolbe and the Structural Theory of Organic Chemistry. It's about a 19th century German chemist. Now, why on earth would I want to read from such a book? Being an academic, the answer, of course, is that I wrote it, my senior year of college. And actually, I just want to read one paragraph from the acknowledgments. I'm quoting here. Finally, I would like to thank my parents and family for the love, support, and encouragement they have always shown. I especially thank my mother, who has continued to show her support despite the realization that I am not going to medical school. Now, I worry that I am still a disappointment to my mother. Despite the fact that I did well in organic chemistry and even on the MCAT, medical school was not for me. Education is indeed about dreams and opportunities, but they are your children's dreams and opportunities. The hard part, the hard part, is developing those dreams and seizing those opportunities. Our new young students will flourish so long as they find those things that they are passionate about. They will need your support as they develop those passions. And I know they are already counting on you. Rest assured that your sons and daughters have chosen a wonderful place to begin their education and their adult lives, particularly in this time of a global pandemic. Rice shares their and your high aspirations and offers all that a university can in excellent teaching facilities and support systems, whether on campus or remotely, that will allow them to flourish. We promise to do all we can to make this the exceptional experience for which Rice University is known. We care intensely about what your children, our new students, do with their lives. If history is any indicator, your daughters and sons will flourish. Rice graduates excel across the disciplines in their careers. Indeed, Rice graduates succeed in realizing their goals as the graduates of few other schools do. Separating from our children is difficult, whether for a few hours, days, weeks, or months. But leave when you do, whether leave means leaving the Rice campus or exiting this application on your phone or computer, confident that your child, your young adult, is embarked upon a journey that will serve him or her well for years and indeed decades to come. We thank you for entrusting your family member with us and investing with us in their futures. We are honored to play a role in the next step on their way to opportunity, achievement, and contribution. So don't worry, don't cry. We wish you Godspeed in your journeys home or to your kitchen and look forward to seeing you often in the years ahead. Welcome again to the Rice community. Hello everyone. My name is Bridget Gorman, and I'm the Dean of Undergraduates. In a typical year, this would probably be the first time you would have heard my name as we would meet when you would come to campus on move-in day for your student. But as we all know, this is not a typical year. I have been communicating with you for some time now as we have spent the summer looking toward the start of this year with questions as well as hope in our hearts for your students. And now the big day for your student is almost here and I want to officially welcome you into the Rice community. This is the start of a new journey for your family, and I know you are looking toward your time ahead with excitement, probably some nerves, and certainly some questions. And on the topic of questions, I hope you've been reading the series of newsletters that we have been sending to all new families over the last few weeks. These are designed to give you an overview of the resources that are available to your student, and they highlight different offices whose primary mission is to serve students. They operate to help smooth the transition to Rice and to support them throughout their time with us. Additionally, a selection of offices have developed webinars designed to provide detailed information on some of the most common questions that we get from families each year. These include the Office of Academic Advising, who are gonna overview the advising system at Rice, 
and provide general information on academic rules and regulations. They also run our health professions advising, and that is to help our students learn and prep for a career in medical school, in dental school, and the like. They also have two professional schools that are holding session, the Shepherd School of Music as well as Rice Architecture, which is good to attend if you have an incoming ARCHI or music students because they have very specific requirements. The Office of Financial Aid is going to talk about the need-based um, financial aid process at Rice. And the Office of Student Success Initiatives is going to run a session for people who have a first-time kid in college or, are, or have a first-generation student. And finally, we have our health offices run by Dr. Tim Baumgartner and the Counseling Center and Agnes Ho and Wellness that are going to overview our mental, our mental health resources and student health services. And you can learn about our physicians and nurses and the variety of staff um, and services that they offer. Altogether, the newsletters and webinar series provides a wonderful opportunity to learn about the array of supported services provided at Rice, which are designed to help your student have a truly transformative experience while they are here. Now, whether your student is enrolled and will be on campus or fully remote, you will find useful information in these newsletters and webinars. As I hope you have realized by now, as Dean of Undergraduates, it's my job to oversee the student experience at Rice. This includes our undergraduate curriculum, especially those related to general education, as well as all non-curricular components of student life. My division includes 15 offices clustered around different topics. One being academics, career planning, and leadership development. So Center for Career Development, Study Abroad, Center for Teaching Excellent. Student life activities and clubs. So this would have things like student media. So The Thresher, which is our student newspaper, um, K True, our radio station, Campanile, which is the yearbook, but also student activities in the student center. We have student-run businesses on campus. So the Hoot Deli, Rice Bikes, as well as Coffee House. Um, we also have rice bands and multicultural affairs office. Then we have all our health and well-being offices, um, which I told you about just a second ago uh, with the webinars. And then finally, we have the entire residential college system. And so I oversee and coordinate with our core teams, our magisters, our RAs, our college coordinators, as well as student leadership. So when you think about what I might do and how I might be helpful in the time ahead, know that I ask that I oversee all aspects of the student experience that fall outside of the academic departments where your students will ultimately declare a major or a minor. I like to think of my division as the supportive umbrella that wraps around each student. And more than ever, I take my job very, very seriously. The time ahead has many unknowns for all of us. As I hope you've seen so far, we remain focused on providing an excellent experience for your student despite the challenges presented by the coronavirus pandemic. I believe in our plan for fall, but I also recognize that as we've done since the, since the pandemic began last spring, we will need to remain diligent and adaptable to the circumstances at hand. If and when the circumstance is warranted, I will communicate out updates on relevant happenings on our campus. But I'd also like you to recognize, in a typical year, I would almost never do that. It's not because I don't value and respect your place in our community. As a parent, I most certainly do. Rather, it's because my focus and the focus of everyone else at Rice is and should always be on your student. We respect their autonomy and we treat them as adults. One of our key roles as an institution is helping them stand on their own two feet and learning to do for themselves. Please encourage them to take the initiative in figuring out how to solve their own problems and in making their own choices. I promise you, each one will experience challenges while at Rice. This is inevitable, it's normal, as they are leaving your home to walk their own path. Please allow them the space to figure out and navigate their own challenges. And I'd argue that this is the best preparation you can give them for what lies behind Rice, when that umbrella of supports we've built up around them will no longer be there. Finally, I'd like to end by sending my best wishes to each of you at this important moment in your family. Remember that Orientation Week is gonna keep your student very busy, day and night through the end of day on Friday, August 21st. Please remain calm if you don't hear much from them during that time. Know that they are our sole focus this week and that we are taking good care of them. I also hope you'll enjoy and embrace the journey ahead. As much as this is a new start for your student, it's a new start for each of you as well. Best wishes to you all. We can't wait to meet your student and our newest owl. I come from a family that isn't the most emotional. I remember standing in the commons of Weiss College surrounded by all of the teary-eyed families taking their time to say their goodbyes. I recall that my parents said their brief goodbyes, good lucks, and take cares before leaving to catch their flight back to Seoul. 
While I was filled with nerves and a fear of the unknown, my parents knew that I was going to be okay. Seeing the introduction that Rice had given me, my parents were assured that they had dropped off their daughter at the right place. The moment I stepped out of the car, I was surrounded by upperclassmen who were screaming and shouting my name, moving all of my luggage to my room up four flights of stairs. They knew that if the advisors were willing to move all my belongings in the humid Houston heat, then they would be as supportive with any other aspect of my transition to Rice. And they were absolutely right. Rice has often been ranked as one of the happiest campuses in the nation. A unique and marked contributor to our happiness is what we call our culture of care. Classes are hard, students will be stressed, and they will be challenged over and over again. But one unwavering characteristic is that they will always have a support system. Yes, home is one of them and we know that you will always be there for them. As your student explores various facets of Rice, they will quickly come to realize that they are surrounded by peers that are not just brilliantly smart, but also extraordinarily caring, encouraging, and understanding. The Rice culture of care manifests in the advisor helping and supporting a student struggling with classes, the student delivering food to their sick roommate's bedside, and the OE coordinators who have planned all of OE for the past nine months, having dedicated not just time, but literal blood, sweat, and tears into making this experience the best it can possibly be for all students, regardless of whether they will be remote or on campus for the semester. While we're entering uncharted territories, I'm confident that students will come out of this pandemic stronger as individuals and as a community. My freshman year was when Hurricane Harvey devastated Houston and the surrounding areas of Texas. It was the week after O week and classes were canceled for a period of time. While we spent these moments terrified and worried for ourselves, friends, and family, it also served to highlight the resiliency and supportive nature of Rice students. The instant it was deemed safe to travel, students across campus volunteered to help residents whose homes have been ravaged by Harvey. When we weren't helping the larger community, we were bonding and establishing connections that can only arise from a sense of togetherness and mutual experience. Your student has already been through so much and they have proven themselves to be resilient and optimistic despite the circumstances. With these assets, they are more than prepared for college, rice, and whatever life will present with them next. Today, you gave your guardianship of your children to rice for the next four years. I can only imagine how anxious and worried you are, but you should also feel proud and excited for them. Believe in your student. They've made it here and they will thrive in spite of and because of the hardships they will face. In the same way my parents were completely confident in my ability to take rice by storm, I encourage you to find the strengths your student already possesses and remind them when they forget. Rice will do so many things for your child, but the most important is making them feel like they can find their place, that they can grow in that space, and they can share that experience with you as memories form. First, I want to address the elephant in the room. I'm speaking to you from a laptop, TV, or phone screen. I regret that I don't get to see all your beautiful faces here in front of me. Still, as terrible and painful as what we're dealing with right now is, this too shall pass. This and the fact that I have seen firsthand this summer that Rice is doing everything it can to prioritize the safety of your children is all I want to say about coronavirus. Our Rice community is strong and so are your children. So I'd much prefer to focus on the future and the endless opportunities that await them and you. I'm sure that in the next four years at Rice, your children will meet lifelong friends, experience academic rigor and vitality in a way that they've never experienced it before and make memories that they will keep with them forever and always. If I may though, I would like to lend some advice for you all along the journey. Out of curiosity, I found a study on how much an audience will remember from a presentation. If that isn't the most rice thing to do, then I'm not sure what is. Nonetheless, if that study is to be believed, then one week from now, I'll be lucky if you all remember 10% of what I've said. So while I could talk forever, I'll be brief and share three things I've learned while navigating my time at Rice with my family. First, communicate. I used to call my mother about once a week during my freshman year, and once I got to sophomore year, I called her just about every day for a period of time. To this day, I don't think she knows just how much comfort I got out of those phone calls. I also received a letter from my father after my first O week. It was full of advice, jokes, and warmth. I still read it today. Please don't underestimate how much a short text, email, or phone call means to us, especially in the beginning of our time at Rice. 
Second, give them room. This may sound contradictory after I've just recommended phone calls, texts, and even emails, but I think there's a fine line to be drawn between checking in and smothering. I understand that no one loves your child as much as you do, and you want nothing but the absolute best for them in their time at Rice. Still, and this may be difficult to hear, your student is going to feel lost at times. They're going to make mistakes or do poorly on an exam. They're going to feel like they don't belong. They're going to want to change their major or reevaluate their career path about a million times. And that is all okay. I think college is a transitory time, more than any other. And one of the most important things you can do is give your child the room they need to grow and let them know you love them unconditionally. At the end of the day, the only person who's going to figure out who they are and what they want is them. Third, enjoy this. As I stand here and deliver this message to you, I can't help but reflect on the past three years and feel nostalgic. The memories I made, and perhaps more importantly in this context, the memories I shared with my family are some of my favorites in my time at Rice. The next few years for your child are going to be filled with emotions and experiences for both them and for you. There will be special memories, but as bittersweet as it is, these moments won't last forever. Take it from the senior who still remembers their first day of O-Week like it was yesterday. The time will fly by. All we can do is cherish the moments. Lastly, and this is more reassurance and advice, know that your students are coming to a place that loves them already. Erica and I want nothing more than to meet every single one of them. The O-Week Chords have spent nine months preparing O-Week for them. Their advisors already know their names and whatever goofy facts they wrote about themselves on their roommate forms. Really, beginning with the first day of O week, every single one of your children can call Rice their second home and its community their family. Thank you. <laughs>